but recognising that it has been a particularly tough year for many families in New Zealand and Christmas is just going to make it even tougher. Food banks, some of which have had to close down during this year, are going to be in even more high demand and included in amongst uh, uh, the group of, uh, well, food bank providers is the Salvation Army. Joining me on the programme now is uh, Dr Bonnie Robinson from the Salvation Army Social Policy and Parliamentary Unit. Uh, Bonnie, kia ora. Good morning. Kia ora. A, a little bit early for Merry Christmas, but it is just around the corner. For the Salvation Army, um, first up, you guys have got skin in this game. In fact, your Christmas appeal on at the moment. It is going to be a tough Christmas for many people. Yes, it, it will be a tough Christmas. Uh, we, there's been, you know, it's been a tough year for a lot of people. Uh, and I, I think a tough year for people who might, it might not normally be tough for. So yep. we have had a lot of people made redundant, um, lost their jobs, um, particularly in government circles, but also in some larger manufacturing places. And not everyone has um, yet been able to find alternative employment. So there's going to be families who, um, we'll be finding it tough this year for the first time, yep. uh, but there'll also be families for whom every year has been tough for quite a long time. Mm. Uh, and we are anticipating the need for, for food and just assistance for families to have a good Christmas to yeah. be up this year. Not just about Christmas, though. This is an every week thing for many families. It's become a part of how they make ends meet is a yeah. uh, support from from food banks charities such as Self Salvation Army and others involved as well having yeah. said that though uh, the idea of food banks is relatively recent within our social history would that be fair yes well I, I've, I've been working in the um, social services for uh, um, 20 plus years now mm -hmm. and I do remember uh, a time when we didn't have food banks as the sort of significant and, um, you know, critical part of the social welfare infrastructure that they are now. We've always given out food. There's always been people that needed food. Yeah. Uh, but pre about 1991, it wasn't big. It, it wasn't huge. Um, most social service agencies had some food capacity and they would give out food parcels, but it, it wasn't the huge um, demand that we have now. It really, it kicked off with the benefit cuts yep. uh, in the early 1990s and all the changes to welfare that took place at that time. And uh, the demand just grew um, astronomically. I think I've read somewhere that it was, you know, over a 30% increase yep. uh, in a very short time. And so um, we had to respond because... If you don't, you're effectively leaving children hungry. Yeah, you know, yeah. so so we started having to provide more and more food, and food banks became uh, much more formal and much more structured uh, because they had to 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 meet the demand. And I can remember at the time we thought in those early years of the '90s, you know, this will drop back, this will drop back. Yeah. You know, there'll be changes. We'll get back to where we used to be, and we never have. Uh, and in fact, um, demand, you know, continues to grow. I mean, we occasionally get little <clears throat> reductions in demand, uh, but essentially the demand has stayed high and, and seems to continue to grow. Uh, and it's become basically an, a, a part of the social welfare infrastructure yep. in this country that we have thousands of families every week who need a food bank to be able to feed themselves. Yeah. And and hey, as we head into Christmas, it's as bad as it's ever been. Would you is that a fair comment? Would you say? I I think that's the message we're getting from um from frontline and the Salvation Army, but also other social service agencies, uh, that people are feeling this is as bad as it's been, mm. um, and the demand is still there. Um, there were cuts to um, government support for food banks and. The reasoning was that um, so extra support was given during COVID, but that we're out of COVID now, and yeah. so demand should be dropping back, but it hasn't. Mm. And I, as I mentioned in my introduction, some uh, food bank services have had to shut up shop this year, uh, just not able to uh, to make ends meet themselves. Dave Latelli uh, has been in that situation, and I know that, that some food banks also doing it tough with the extra demand at Christmas. What need to talk more broadly, though, because it's not, when it comes to food insecurity, it's not just about the food. 
It is about the uh, the extra stress that this puts on families uh, of of not knowing where the food is coming from. The extra uh, stress that this puts on relationships uh, within the family as well. This is uh, yes, I mean, not having enough food is bad enough, but food insecurity brings a wide range of problems to struggling families. It, it absolutely does. I, I just was reading yesterday um, a small um, report from one of uh, the Salvation Army's uh, community ministries and food banks where they had um, uh, talked to people who were com- women, particularly who were coming to the food bank quite frequently. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things that really struck me was the woman said that two things Uh, one they didn't have enough food and so they would often go without food themselves and feed their children and because of that they absolutely lacked energy uh, to be able to um, do the things they needed to do in their day Mm. Uh, so they're hungry basically you know these these mothers who are trying to raise their children are hungry because they don't have enough food Uh, and food consumed their thinking Uh, They were thinking constantly about food, where were they going to get it, where are they going to have enough, Um, how was today, this week going to go in terms of food. And I was just uh, shocked, really. I don't know why, because I've been in the the social services for a long time, but I was shocked that in this country we would have people who are consumed by food, um, thinking about food because they just don't have enough, they don't have that food security of knowing that this week they're going to have enough. Mm. And so when you're in that situation, it's very hard for you to do other things. You know, if you've got other problems in your life that need resolving, or perhaps you would like to find work, um, or you'd like to find better work that pays more, it's very hard to focus on those other things when you're hungry or you're worried about food constantly mm. uh, because it's kind of the fundamental, isn't it? You know, food, yep. shelter. Yep. If you're not secure in those, it's really hard to do anything else. So the cost to us as a country of the fact that people are insecure about food is actually beyond the food yes. um, cost. It's actually the the lost opportunity um, and that we have with people who aren't able to fulfill their potential yep. and contribute as much because they just don't have enough food. Uh, part of that mix, of course, is uh, child poverty. And, and this government and previous governments have made a commitment to reducing uh, child poverty. And uh, uh, there have has been a child and youth strategy released in, in recent weeks as well. But I suppose when it comes to, um, to children... And, uh, and and poverty and, and, and food banks and all of this type of stuff. Is it the government's problem to solve, do you think? You, you mentioned before that food banks really kicked in after benefit cuts happened. Is it the situation that if benefits were much higher, we wouldn't need food banks and that would be a good thing? Or do you think that actually food banks, often faith-based organisations, coming alongside people struggling in their communities, providing them not just with food, but with support and hope, is it uh, is this the government's problem to solve, or, or who who should be involved in the answer to this? Do you think, Bonnie? I I think it's a collective uh, problem. Certainly, the government has a significant role to play mm-hmm. because we really don't want people to have to rely on food banks to feed themselves. I mean, yep. it's it's demeaning for the people to come along and ask. Um, and you know, in a in a Western developed nation people should have incomes that mean they can feed themselves. And so some of those big levers, like the rates of benefits, uh, right, minimum wages and conditions and things like that, that is the government's role uh, to to fix those big levers. But I think there is also a role for the community still uh, in, in um, in helping people with food security. And certainly in the Salvation Army, we're trying to look at... um, our model of providing food and and uh, looking at you know the social supermarket models and models that will make food uh, more sustainable and um, secure for low income uh, people. Yep. So there's a there's a role to play for the community. And one of the things we can do as uh, the Salvation Army and other community organisations is we don't just provide the food. We're able to provide a wraparound service yes. and and 
send people to other services. So we have a role as well. Uh, and I think um, the food industry has a role as well in mm -hmm. terms of, you know, the price of food in New Zealand and, you know, how, how our entire food supply uh, chain works. But in terms of that baseline, having enough money to reliably be able to feed yourself Government has a big role to play in that in terms of benefit settings um, and in terms of um, wages and conditions for particularly people on lower um, lower wage uh, jobs to make sure that, you know, in this country, people do have enough to meet the basics of life. Yeah, certainly. And hey, as mentioned before, this Christmas is going to be a tough one. A lot more people on the unemployment benefit than this time uh, last year. Uh, lots of people looking for work and less jobs available. When it comes to, I suppose, the uh, the church's role in being a part of this, something that we're starting next week is encouraging people to make uh, charitable giving a, a part of their Christmas celebration, I suppose. And uh, certainly Salvation Army on the list, given the very good work that you do. What could can people do? Listening to this at the moment, Bonnie, what what's the best thing people can do to support the work that you're doing, and in particular to support uh, people having a better Christmas than they would otherwise? Well, if they go to the uh, Salvation Army's website, you'll find um, the information about the Christmas appeal. So I encourage okay. people to do that. Uh, one of the things I like to say, and and is that actually one of the things that really helps is a monetary gift. Okay. Um, it, a lot of people do give goods, which is is really helpful, and we we uh, always welcome those. But when we get a monetary gift, um, it does help us to go and get the things that we know people are needing in our communities. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of like food, we can go and buy those things that um, we don't normally get donated yep. and, you know, perishables and things like that. And at Christmas, we can buy um, some treats for people. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, in terms of uh, giving um, toys and things uh, for families, it means we can go and buy things where there might be gaps, yeah. um, you know, and because we often know the age groups of the people, of the children and things like that and, and what would really uh, be helpful. And, and so a monetary gift means that we can actually really make sure we're targeting that gift at the things that we're missing mm. that people are needing. So um, I do encourage people to think about a monetary gift uh, as part of their Christmas celebration. Yep. And, you know, regarding it as kind of, um, it's it's like um, it's like tying a parcel up under the tree, but someone else goes and gets it. So <laughs> uh, and that really does help us uh, when we know we've got a sum of money that we can spend and we can then identify where we're going to get um, the best impact in terms of you know making sure that the families we're serving have have a good Christmas. Well, I would certainly encourage uh, listeners to do that to put Salvation Army on their Christmas list. Of course, the uh, Christmas appeal on at the moment SalvationArmy.org.nz. Bonnie, thank you so much for what you and your team are doing. Thanks for being on the program once again. Thanks for having us. Hey, thanks very much for joining us in the Rima Studio. Thanks very much for watching the interview. It's kind of nice to have an audience, actually. And if you did like what you watched, then do give us a like, do give us the thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more interviews like that one, or perhaps even better, subscribe and those interviews will come straight to you. Don't forget to turn on your notifications and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.